Now it's time for us to focus on the persons we are privileged to honor here today. It's with great honor for us to give the Domination McGowan Award to Wally Bowen today, even if Wally cannot be here in person to receive. Wally is one of those unsung heroes in our midst, a person who has toiled in rural communities out of sight for most of us whose work focused in places like Washington and New York. But without people like Wally, our common goals would never be achieved. While the McGowan Award often given to someone whose work has opened up opportunities for people of color and women. This year we're honoring Wally's work on behalf of those who live in rural communities, many of whom are also people of color. Rural America is the part of our country that still consistently lags behind the rest of the United States in technology access. While many of us work on legislation and policies that strive to improve rural access, Wally's been the person who actually builds those networks. Wally got his start teaching media literacy in the early 1900s. In 1993, Wally started imagining the idea of a free network that would serve his rural community a year when the World Wide Web was still in its infancy. When he helped found Maine, the Mountain Area Information Network, in 1996, most of his neighbors in western North Carolina had to dial long distance to access the internet. Maine provided local dial of internet access and provided the first public interest access to libraries in 12 mountain counties of the state. Wally likened the network to a quilting bee in which resources and costs are shared to create a value-added community asset that no single organization or institution could fund alone. Alongside the earliest days of eBay and Craigslist, and well into and before Etsy, Wally created the Blue Ridge Web Market, through which small businesses in Western North Carolina could sell their products through the World Wide Web. In 2000, when the FCC created the Low Power Radio Service, Wally and Maine built a low power FM station fulfilling a dream to become a content creator. Two years later, recognizing that his neighbors were hungry for more locally generated contact, Wally pushed the government to negotiate for local public access channels with their cable provider. In 2003, Maine was offering wireless broadband service to four North Carolina counties. And when the Broadband Opportunities Technology Program was created as part of the Federal Stimulus Program in 2009, Wally literally wrote the book on local internet access. His local network cookbook envisioned a Jeffersonian internet for civil liberties and quality journalism with value over traditional Wall Street business models. Wally developed a model that generated revenue and provided a valuable service while creating the opportunity for unique content to be created and local voices, voices to be heard. In doing so, he inspired media activists all around the country. Sadly, five years ago, Wally was diagnosed with ALS, and he continues to provide leadership, sharing thoughtful commentary, and his vision for communities like his own. I understand he is joining us today through the wonderful and creative technology that he so thoughtfully shared. We also pleased that Monroe Gilmore, coordinator of the Western North Carolina Citizens Ending Institutional Bigotry, and Wally's longtime friend and neighbor, can be with us today to accept the award of his behalf.
about the country. I just wish he were here standing with me so you could feel and experience his room-filling energy and spirit. Uh, but I did bring him with me. As, as Earl noted, while he has been living, and I would add, living violently with ALS for five years, he explained to me the progression of the disease and what would go last. And nine months later, he and Carla had the love of their life, little June Claire that you can see here. Uh, Wally now can move nothing, and he typed some words for me to share with you with his eyes, using an amazing laser-generated um, machine, and I'd like to share those with you for one. I'm so honored to receive this award from the United Church of Christ a faith community I have long admired for its commitment to social justice and for its pioneering work in the field of media reform. I am especially grateful that the Donald H. McGannon Award for the first time is recognizing rural folk who, as a class, as a class of people, underrepresented in mainstream media. This award also has special meaning for me because my work has been supported and inspired by our own, my own faith community, Jubilee, in Asheville, North Carolina. One of the inspirational lessons from Jubilee I have carried with me for 25 years is this guidance on finding your true calling from the theologian Frederick, Frederick Buechner. Your true vocation is found in that place where your deep gladness meets the world's deep hunger. It has been my good fortune to have found that place of true vocation in my work through the Mountain Area Information Network these past 20 years. On behalf of the rural citizens for whom we advocated, thank you again for this award affirming this work. Thank you. <laughs>